this hour, demonstrators are starting to gather for anti-Muslim marches scheduled to take place in more than 30 cities nationwide. The rallies are organized by Act for America, an organization the Southern Poverty Law Center classified as the largest grassroots anti-Muslim group in America. The group's founder, Brigitte Gabriel, is one of the nation's most prolific anti-Muslim activists and recently found her way into the Trump White House after requesting a meeting. Those ra these rallies mark an end to a tumultuous week that included the blockbuster Comey hearing and Republicans defending Donald Trump's incompetence. The president's new at this. He's new to government. And so he probably wasn't steeped in the long-running protocols that establish the relationships between DOJ, FBI, and White Houses. He's just new to this. He's just a baby. And joining me now, the deputy chair of the DNC, Congressman Keith Ellison. How, how, you know, Keith, Congressman, I'm going to come back to uh, the Speaker of the House in which you serve, oh, yeah. essentially rocking a 70-year-old businessman like an infant. <laughs> but we're going to come back to that. Um, but let's 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 start with uh, the creeping uh, Sharia law that is taking over the United States. Apparently, you are of the Muslim faith. Yes. Uh, why why are the Muslims? Uh, proliferating Sharia law around the <laughs> Well, uh, there's not one state, one city, one county, one unincorporated municipal area that has passed Sharia law. Sharia law is uh, actually not, it's, it, it's not a code, a written code. It actually changes from time to time, place to place, and uh, it's not the same everywhere. The point is, this is nothing more than a tactic to scare Americans about their Muslim neighbors. And it is part and parcel of the political landscape we are in right now. When the president says he's going to ban Muslims, when he says that Muslims don't like America, when he says that uh, Muslims in New Jersey were celebrating 9 11, this is just creating a culture of hate. But it's not confined to Muslims, it's also Sikhs, it's also, uh, you know, Latin American, Ameri La La Anyone Latino Americans. Brown, who people right. think is a Muslim, they didn't even know. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and it's actually been a, a spike in anti Semitism as well. Yeah. And uh, so what, what we're seeing is intolerance sort of like take over, and the president is the chief cheerleader of it all. It's really scary. And you make a really good point because, you know, the, the, the sort of fear of Muslims is really eclipsed by the fear being created in Muslim communities. There is actual <laughs> statistics. Uh, the May 9th report, uh, a May 9th report from the Council on, on American Islamic Relations from 2014 to 2016, anti-Muslim bias incidents jumped 65 percent in that two-year period. CARE found that hate crimes targeting Muslims surged 584 percent. Well, just think about what happened in Portland about a few right. days ago. I mean, uh, this this guy is attacking Muslim women, a woman in a hijab, and then when uh, some bystanders say, hey, man, that's not cool, he kills two of them and injures one of them severely. This kind of thing uh, is green-lighted by the president's rhetoric. And so we've got to stand up. And, and you know what? I, I guarantee you one thing, though, Joy, as these anti-Muslim rallies are happening, <clears throat> there will be multi-faith interfaith rallies that step that, that emerge as well. Americans are not going back to the bad old days when you couldn't be Catholic, you couldn't be Japanese, you couldn't be black, you couldn't be all these things. We're simply not going back there. We we know what that is. Yeah. And we're gonna and we're gonna continue to assert our right to be human and on this planet. Yeah. And and I want to read a, a statement from this Act for America that's organizing these marches. It says this is a march against Sharia law and for human rights. Our nation is built on freedom of religion, a pillar of our democracy, which we must always respect, protect, and honor. However, many aspects of Sharia law run contrary to basic human rights and are completely incompatible with our laws and our democratic values. As you pointed out, no one's trying to actually enact Sharia law, but d does it disturb you that someone who has this sort of fantasy of a Muslim takeover of the United States was invited to the White House? Well, yeah, it's like uh, it's like playing Birth of a Nation in the White House yep. as, as President Wilson did at one time. Birth of a Nation's response, you know, that movie inspired a lot of hate and, and a resurgence of the Ku Klux Klan. I mean, these things really do matter. He has given the, uh, the stamp of approval uh, to a lot of haters, you know, uh, 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 Sebastian Gorky, the, uh, the uh, you know, Brigitte. Um, taxpayer paid uh, yeah, taxpayer member of the paid, administration. Yeah. You know, the, the, these are people who have endorsed extreme ideas, uh, Steve Bannon, the poster child for it, and, and yet uh, we don't see anything uh, from the president uh, saying we should. I mean, look, George Bush, after 9 11, went to a mosque and said, if you attack our Muslim neighbors, the law is going to come down on you. Yeah. I mean, you know, and it's rare that a Democrat says good things about George Bush, but yep. you know what? He deserves that credit. Mm -hmm. He understood that as the chief 
executive of the country and the leader of the country, he has to set a moral tone. This president is doing the exact opposite, but I, I believe in Americans' ability to come forward and say, yep. no, we're not going back there. Okay, so and we, in the short time that I have left, I want to get through the fact that while uh, these marches are happening, while we are watching what's happening with James Comey, uh, your colleagues on the other side of the aisle in Congress are rushing through um, health care repeal right. that could affect 23 million or more Americans losing their health care. They just pushed through a Dodd-Frank repeal, meaning unleashing the banks to go back to being casinos. That's right. Um, this is happening behind the scenes. Are you reporting? Republican colleagues believing that Comey Gate or uh, Russia Gate gives them the license to do this behind Americans' backs. And will there be hearings? You know, the truth is, uh, they, they have rushed all this stuff through very minimal hearings, or if any. You know, right now the Senate. Uh, is moving through a very nasty health care. Uh, I, I will. I'll have to put air quotes around it. Yeah. Because they're not really health care bills. They're tax cuts for rich people with the wrapping paper of health care around them. But you know they're doing this quietly. They believe silence is golden in the Senate. Yep. And they're just going to try to launch this on it and then just hold their nose until. What are you know, what are Democrats? What is the what is the party doing about it? We are holding rallies all over the country. Uh, we are going into congr uh, Republican districts, and we're not going there. We're being invited. There mm -hmm. and we're talking about health care with our neighbors. We're talking about what does it mean to go back to the bad old days when you could be excluded or have to pay an exorbitant price for if you have a pre existing condition, mm -hmm. which about 133 million Americans have. Right. What, is, what does that mean when you're, bro, the price of your drug spike, when you don't have free cervical screenings? Or uh, we, when all these things that the Affordable Care Act brought, and the, let me tell you, Joy, the numbers are big. People are coming out all over the place, and we are we are engaging, and people are aware. And, and uh, last question, um, you know, and there are a lot of rifts in the Democratic Party right now oh, yeah. um, between the Bernie faction and the Hillary faction, but also between the party and its own Black women supporters. What is the party uh, doing on that front? What are you going to do about it? Well, you know, we have to embrace the fact that Black women have been the the bedrock of the Democratic Party, the most reliable. Voters, and also are the the people who are offering us the the way forward as well. You know, black women are the first to talk about the need to a fair wage. You look at these fight for 15 marches all over the country. Uh, they, you see the black women in front of those things. A young woman named LaQuasia Legrand was working at KFC. She said, "You know what? I, I got to do better." And she decided to go become an organizer. And so black women are leading the way in all these important aspects of American life. Hey, we're here to listen, yeah. and we're here to follow. And so I thank them for stepping up and offering that leadership. Congressman Keith Ellison, I, I'm going to put you on the spot on the air. If one of my producers wants to talk to you a few more minutes, I know you have Resistance Summer that you guys are doing. Yeah. Would you do a little post show that we can put on our Facebook page? We will definitely do that. And Resistance Summer is moving across the country well. 120 sites, all 50 states, and I'll be more than happy to stick around. All right, Paging Alexis Stagio. Paging Alexis Stagio. <laughs> We're going to have our social media team come and talk to you afterwards. And you guys can see more uh, of Keith Ellison's comments uh, on our Facebook page. I just put him and my producer. Producers on the spot. Sorry. Uh, thank you very much. I really thank appreciate you, you coming by. You Please bet. come back. All right. And up oh. next, three words that could doom Donald Trump: obstruction of justice. Stay with us. Hey there. I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me, or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.